Ni hao, ni hao. It is uh, a great disappointment that I cannot be with you today in China. This will be the first year uh, that I have not been able to attend uh, with all of our colleagues uh, a conference in the fall in China. So I, uh, I send my best wishes and I hope to be back with you uh, in the next year. This morning, I would like to take an opportunity to talk a little bit about what the society is doing right now, but most importantly, I've been asked to talk about what Hollywood is doing. So I'm going to give you some high points and uh, hopefully uh, bring you up to uh, speed on our activities here in Hollywood. The Advanced Imaging Society uh, is an organization of both creative people and technology companies. Our creative companies include the Walt Disney Company, Pixar, uh, Marvel, uh, DreamWorks, and other leaders in content creation. And our technology companies include Cisco and Dell and HP and Google and uh, many other uh, companies that enable creative people to tell their stories. John Favreau, the director of so many uh, hit movies, including Iron Man and Lion King, said at an event that we produced a couple of years ago, technology is a river that flows in only one direction, but storytelling is the killer app. And I think that is our, our anthem here at AIS, and that is that on all fronts, regardless of what's happening, technology is moving ahead and adapting to the marketplace. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the marketplace and then I wanna to talk to you about two or three technologies that we think are being um, used right now to great effect. COVID-19 has uh, really set Hollywood uh, back in the last six to seven months. It's fair to say that it's had a terrible impact on the ability of the creative community to create movies, television, concerts, uh, theater productions, uh, music videos, and advertising. Uh, theme parks are still closed for the, for the most part. Only about 70% uh, of movie cinemas are open. New York and Los Angeles cinemas are still primarily closed. So it's a very, very difficult time for the industry. The workforce is uh, uh, confined to home. Uh, actors, directors, producers, post-production people, all are working under strict new guidelines and are, in, for the most part, uh, working either from home or on stages that have very, very difficult uh, rules for safe production. Here are the movies that have moved from 2020. Um, Avatar has been moved uh, from 2021 to 2022. The Batman from Warner Brothers has been moved to 2022. Black Widow from Marvel has moved to May of 2021. Tom Cruise's Top Gun Maverick has moved to 2021. Fast and Furious 9, Godzilla vs. Kong, Jungle Cruise, and the James Bond epic film that was supposed to be uh, showing in the holidays has also been moved to 2021. So all of the major Hollywood productions have been delayed. They are hoping that uh, you will begin to see these blockbusters in April of 2021. The impact, of course, is that the revenues are down. Uh, advertising revenue is down because television programs cannot uh, be aired uh, because they're, they're backlogged and getting produced. For a company like the Walt Disney Company, uh, cinemas are not delivering ticket sales. Their TV uh, programs on their television shows are uh, backlogged because they're awaiting new uh, produced episodes. The theme parks are closed or limited, and their concert and stage plays business is uh, severely limited. This puts a tremendous amount of pressure on a company like Disney, and they're not unusual in Hollywood. Just about every major company is facing very, very challenging time. Most importantly, the workforces are working from home, uh, and this has driven a, an enormous new uh, effort to use technology to make um, these productions possible. 
we want to showcase uh, a couple of examples today. Um, recently, in response to these challenges, the Advanced Imaging Society produced a, a series of videos at the Hollywood Studios of Radiant Images on a program that allowed our members to watch virtually uh, a series of speakers. Matt Workman in Boston, Massachusetts has been using technology and uh, Unreal Engine, the game engine, to demonstrate to creative people how they can actually create content uh, using these new technologies. Uh, Matt joined us from his home and uh, showed us his studio, which is located in his home uh, outside of Boston. Here is an excerpt of Matt's presentation. Hey, uh, if we had a theme for today, Buzz, it's heavy hitters. Uh, we got a lot of heavy hitters on today's show. Uh, so we don't want to keep them waiting. But last week, we got such fabulous uh, feedback from uh, our session with Matt Workman. Uh, who came to us live from Boston, and he kind of blew everybody away by showing his virtual uh, stage uh, from home. So why don't we take a look at just 30 seconds from last week's session with Matt. Let's have a look. Is a Vive controller that's being tracked by the sensors around me, and this allows me to control the camera by going handheld. So this is uh, one of the other ways that a lot of filmmakers like to work. And I'm just going to move around the virtual dolly, so to speak, to get a view of this that looks good. Something like this. And again, re remember, we're recording the whole time. This is not an expensive rendering time process. I can just roll the whole thing and just have a lot of footage. Or you can cut in between either way. So I'm zooming in here, changing the focal length. Buzz, we got emails uh, from literally from Brazil to Amsterdam to New York and Miami uh, and Vancouver and Toronto about that session. So. We are, uh, we're, we're thrilled. He's, he's an amazing creative. We think that what you just saw from Matt Workman is an example of how more and more production can be uh, achieved uh, when getting out on location or getting an enormous number of people together is problematic. What's interesting is that in the productions that Matt is working on, his director is in a, another location uh, his producers are in different locations, and yet they're all collaborating and working on the same piece of production uh, at the same time. And we think this is a, an absolutely new trend that we're going to see more of. The next topic are virtual stages. And Sam Mickelson of Stargate Studios joined us, along with Michael Mansouri of Radiant Images and others to talk about how light stages can be used to create content without having to go out and shoot on location. Here's a brief look at that presentation. Today, we're gonna to see tools being used in virtual stage settings with Radiant Images' Michael Mansouri. He is joined this morning by Sam Nicholson from the American Society of Cinematographers and the CEO of Stargate. So thank you for being here and let's get started. Night Flyers was an early project that we did shot in Ireland for UCP. And the idea was to do a 70 foot wall of LED outside the front of this uh, spaceship. It's this television series. So there's a lot of material coming back to the, the bridge. And it, so we, this is a relatively low res wall, um, which about P3. And we tested it in England, and we did a use the Unreal Engine to, in real time, render the Earth and the extension of the ships. Uh, all those arms out there are an extension of. Uh, when you see outside the ship, it's it's all an extension. So set extension and Earth, but we did a blind test of pre-baked images, pre-rendered, and a real time render through the Unreal Engine, and blind test, everybody picked the Unreal render, which is quite a surprise to us, because then we could change lighting and do collaborative editing, where if the director says, oh, I want to be a little further away from Earth at this point, or slow down the arms, okay, yeah, boom, it's, a, it's an engine. So 
I think that's really one of the most exciting areas right now is as you you design something which looks beautiful, you get it to play back in Unreal at a particular speed, and then you have to get it into in-display with off-axis tracking, interactive lighting, and it changes a bit. So you just want to have a lot of testing up front, and you can balance these elements so that you can do real-time with collaborative editing through the Unreal Engine with off-axis tracking, outside in, inside out tracking, whatever. And, and you can really truly achieve finished pixels on set. Sony came to us back in 2018 and we pitched them on uh, capturing light field with the Sony Arc Zeros. And just because we weren't 100% confident at the RX zeros would be able to, you know, generate a light field. I also pitched them on, hey, why don't we do bullet time, but let's do it underwater. In a sense, you know, bullet time is a sense of a volumetric light field capture. We're, we're seeing it from multiple views. So we did this wacky, crazy idea of taking 100 cameras and sink it underwater. So let's, let's watch that. So this is from our Meridian volumetric and light field camera array. This is in my pool at, uh, at, at my house. We, we dropped a uh, black duvetine in and then had a, a girl who could hold her breath remarkably long. And we put, uh, what was it, 120, Michael? Uh, yeah. RX zeros underwater? Yep. And, and did bullet time. There's a bullet time. That's, that's moving through 120 cameras synchronized underwater. And you it was know. actually the second hardest thing I've ever done in my life because we had to take all these cameras and put them underwater, come back, couldn't see. And uh, well, luckily we got all the cameras back except we lost one. But uh, for 2018 for Sony, we were actually able to give them both. The light field portable solution, uh, which was highly inspired by your work buzz at Lightro. When, when I first saw light field, the stuff that you guys did, I was in awe because everything I've seen from volumetric is great. A light field to me is is the cinematic approach towards it. It, it renders harsh lighting. It's, uh, it renders just incredible detail. Um, it was also a little bit impractical because the cameras were very expensive. Yeah. So that's why we decided to go with consumer grade cameras and synchronize them. And now we're doing a lot of things with these incredible cameras. <laughs> we're doing light field, volumetric and bullet time. Finally, uh, the virtual reality has been a, a, a technology that has had its uh, uh, ups and downs as it moves into the mainstream of uh, production. Again, uh, COVID-19 has renewed interest in virtual reality because it allows people to gather together without physically being in the same space. So. We are looking at uh, virtual production stages, volumetric capture of uh, content, which allows us to put digitally uh, realistic people into uh, a scene or a game engine and create content. So this is a, another new trend. And it's important to note that as the industry retools and reconfigures how we all work together and collaborate, uh, there is an absolute goal that higher resolution, high quality pictures, whether it's UHD or 4K or HDR technologies and the sound are all becoming standard. So uh, although the industry is uh, quieter right now, uh, the drive as we move forward is to include all of these high resolution uh, pictures and sound into our workflows moving forward. Uh, we have been following Apple and Samsung about their plans for possibly having new products uh, in the marketplace uh, in the next year or two. And we think that Apple will probably introduce some sort of AR content uh, glasses or technology uh, in 2021 or 2022. It's important to note that most of our member companies do not think that we will be through the COVID-19 challenges uh, soon. Um, I think most of the people uh, feel strongly that 
Movies will be back in theaters, hopefully, by April, May, and June of 2021. And that there is such demand for content right now that once we are able to get back to work, there is going to be an enormous amount of work for creative people. The demand for content has never been higher as people want their television shows, their motion pictures, whether they're streamed or in movie theaters or on traditional television networks. Uh, that demand has never been stronger than it is now. We just need to uh, get people healthy so that they can, they can get at this content. So volumetric capture stages, uh, virtual reality, uh, virtual stages, um, virtual production, all of this has been accelerated because of the pandemic. Uh, it was moving ahead, as you know, I talk about it almost every year, but this year it is going into hyperspeed because of the pandemic and the need for that. Uh, Apple and others have been talking about the era of uh, uh, mobile phones is giving way to uh, new forms of content uh, con consumption. And as we look out at the next five years, we think that this will um, explode actually in growth as uh, the combination of the demand for content and the demand for easily producible, portable content, those two forces come together along with the economic uh, support of the global uh, uh, suppliers who desperately need content to sell to their consumers. Uh, in the course of the next year, we intend to continue to provide a series of videos to our members worldwide from Hollywood, uh, highlighting the work of our member companies, and we hope you will join us uh, in 2021 as we move to that new platform. It's affecting our ability to reach our global community, and we're quite excited about it. I want to acknowledge Professor Charles Wang, our chairman for China from the Beijing Film Academy, our colleagues and friends at CCTV, and uh, throughout uh, China. We really do miss being there with you, uh, but we hope to be there virtually with you in the coming months, and I'll look forward to seeing you personally there in the next year. That's it from Hollywood. Thank you so much. Xie Xie.